Good morning. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about managing Revit families. And managing Revit families can be a really important topic in dealing with a daily, uh, a daily process in working in Revit environment. And uh, I'm going to talk basically about those 10 topics today. And it, uh, actually, you might need to go back and it'll have a little... Uh, you know, revision for my previous lecture about uh, Revit families, and I a little bit spoke about uh, furniture there. But here I'm going to show you more like a, a day by day uh, a, a problem, plug uh, issues, or bugs that might happen uh, to you and how to fix them and how to get the best out of the furniture or managing the furniture actually in Revit. So basically, uh, I'm going to continue uh, this uh, exercise that I have and it's again uh, it's the video number 14th in the unit 5 and the first topic is when you place actually the the family and again we say that we go architecture and we go space sorry component and then place a component and if I look at this uh, the disk uh, the default first thing to be loaded and I try to place that thing here and again, the first thing to look at is the active view. We're going to be attached, and it's it's actually a level base. So as we as, as we explained before, it's going to be attached to the ground floor level. So when you place that in here, and then you hit escape or cancel uh, twice, uh, you're going to select this guy, and if you hit space with it, it's going to actually rotate itself 90 degree with each hit on the space bar on your keyboard. Same thing can happen during the process of you know the placement so you can hit space even before you click and it's going to rotate itself so th that might be the first thing to be done because i noticed some of my students is actually you know like placing the placing the component or placing the elements and then they go ahead and uh, use the rotate command and that's a kind of you know a, a really an, a really annoying issue because you have to deal with the ability to change or the possibilities that Revit can provide for you with each space and in this case it's just a 90 degree rotation but if you go with a more advanced families like a door it might give you like especially the single leaf better than the double leaf so anything that to be loaded here you will notice that each space actually there's four possibilities that's one two and then three and four so there is four possibilities can be controlled by the space itself sorry two possibilities for the space itself and when you move your hand to the left another two can be you know controlled by keeping you know pushing on space so you can put the left side or right side for the opening and then you push that your hand to the right part of the wall and then you have the another two option that you can control by the same space and then you click and then the opening will be generated and placed and rivet will place the door for you so that might be really interesting if if you have some aligned uh, object i think also rivet can sense I'm not really quite sure about that, but uh, let's have an inclined line, and then we have a component. See again, that's the power of space. See, it's it's sense when you hover about, and again hovering is putting the mouse above the object. When you, you put it here and you space, you know, like it sense that this guy in uh, is actually a perpendicular, but since since I just get this one, another reference, it's still sensing it. It's really nice, actually. So not only horizontal, and then this, whatever angle is, and then vertical, and then whatever this angle is, and then horizontal again. That's really a powerful thing. While here, it doesn't offer you the, you know, the exact horizontal and vertical uh, part of uh, aligning, aligning or positioning uh, the family that you just picked. So that can be really, really, you know, useful for you when you're trying to, you know, place an object in. You might lose a serious amount of time when you, you know, just place that guy, you know, randomly without knowing that you can do that. And then you use the align tool, you go select and then you go align and then, you know, seek that guy and then this guy. It's an extra waste of time and resources that you just do use two or three commands to you know to place correctly the family that you want so that's about it for our first topic so let's see what we have 
moving furniture with the nearby elements. That's really, really a nice uh, thing to be uh, designed by Autodesk and Rivet. So if I go in architecture here and then component and place a component, and I will go load family and from the load family I will have a, a, any type of beds here. You can find that if you go up, up already, you know, it's a US metric, uh, try to go for furniture or beds or whatever. Furniture, I think, and then beds, and then any one of those, you know. I'll go with the first one. And then, you you know, I'm just zooming in. You can see that it's actually sensing the alignment of this object when you want to place it to be, you know, uh, to be aligned with the uh, inner face of that wall. That might be really interesting. And when you place it, it's really nice. And by placing this, it, there is no gap between the object, you know, and the wall and after you place this not during the placement process so you can see see this a rotation after placement that's all but after you place there will be you know in the option bar here a new uh, a new a new option for you it's a it's a checkbox saying that you can move with the nearby elements and by that you know when you move the wall the object that you placed is actually retaining or keeping its position as it was before ignoring what happened to the wall and that might be really annoying because usually no one wants this gap to be between his bed and the wall usually the bed uh, usually you know attached to the wall or left with a very small you know gap like you know like a little bit like that right it depends on you know whatever you want or you don't want you know, like any humidity to, to damage the bed and whatever so if you want this distance to be kept or you want no distance to be kept whatever you want and it depends on you know you, your, your setting or your preferences you can do that and you, you're still in the design process you are not finalizing the the whole uh, the whole plan yet so you just just pick this move with the nearby elements and now when you, you know, pick the wall and you push it up, you see, when you change that, you see that the, the, the bed will retain or keep the same distance that it has to the wall itself. And by that, you're creating a type of concentrate uh, or a link relationship between, you know, that bed and that wall. And that, trust me, really can save a significant amount of time, especially when you have hundreds of, of beds in a hotel and you want to push that wall to increase the overall area of that hotel by a specific amount and that's a really nice option that you might you know you know not noticing actually when you work in because it's usually not available during the placement or the creation of the family member itself rather it will be shown after you select and after you create and after you place the family itself anyway so that's been said we can go to the third point which is some furniture may not be seen in some views that's so true and we spoke about that in the previous lecture and aware you have to be aware of you know several factors actually when you place furniture first that which type of family you are using and is it placed or attached to the level as I speak in the previous lecture and again you, you might need to have a good go and and try to revise that and as the bed goes or as the bed or the desk here they are all or both actually attached to the ground floor level and they are actually beneath the cut line so you should actually see them and they are above the minimum depth that you can see within the view range and I'm gonna show you the view range in a couple of seconds if you don't know what is it but basically remember this this is a floor plan so you're supposed to be cutting this above around 1 or uh, 1.2 meter above the floor level and you are looking down so you shouldn't see any ceiling you shouldn't see any lighting fixture above your cutting plane so when you go to the same ceiling plan uh, sorry, the same level, but in the ceiling plan set of drawing, so you hit the ground floor here, you are not seeing the bed or nor actually the desk that you just placed. While you see this, the, the reflecting uh, the ceiling here, the 600 by 600 that we created in earlier 
videos with this lighting fixtures and those or everything in this room are actually above the 1.2 and above the limit that allowed to be shown in the in the view range so when you go to the ground floor you're not so not seeing this while you see those so you have to understand this thing that some of the furniture or architectural element are met or designed to be seen in a specific views so you have to remember if they are attached to the floor or they are attached to the ceiling or to the lower side of the roof and that's really critical because i saw lots of people placing families and they are keep complaining why they are not seeing it and some of the students are actually making a serious mistake and even in a worse condition with placing placing doors so he placing the door and he keep clicking you know like click 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 all the time and poor rivet you know he trying to tell him you can see it here you can see it here and i saw lots of students trust me crying in the in the exam or lots of people whining i hate rivet and because they don't know how to deal with it because he's or they are playing placing something that cannot be seen in this view and even worse they don't know how to delete what they've done or undo it while if you go to the ground floor you can see that you added you know like a couple of hundred doors in here and you don't know that they are been placed and that's really that's really can be you know an annoying thing so you have to be aware that door shouldn't be seen in a reflected ceiling unless that ceiling height is really low and lots of been as lots of architectural elements are actually following this thing and again to to understand that very well uh, it's really if you if you didn't select anything in this view when you go down here you see this property panel going to show the the property of the view itself so if you navigate until you see something called view range here and you hit on edit you can see that there is a three primary range and one view depth and it might be a little bit annoying technically they are but you know if you hit show in here it can, ex it can be explained easily so that's the number two which is basically you know the primary range for a cut plane which is this guy here which is 1.2 meter above the floor finish which is technically here in number three and it's usually to be setting the primary range bottom which is this guy which is in our case associated to level one and it's zero offset from it so it's exactly on level one so when you put the chair or the bed here it's beneath the cut line and above the bottom range and that's why you see it while all the reflected ceiling or the the, the rcp sorry the the false ceiling or the false uh, or the sorry the, the lighting fixture they are here and they are above the top which is this guy here the top range that you shouldn't see anything above it that's why you don't see them and when you change your setting here from floor plan to ceiling plan in the ground floor so you are on the you are maintaining actually the same primary range cut plane but instead you are looking upward that way so you ha you will see anything in the ceiling here and you will not see anything here and that's the way we want it when we do the RCP or the reflected ceiling plans and uh, th that's a that's a basic and important thing to understand to deal with the view range and the last thing to be said is the view depth and the view depth is actually allowing us to extend our lower level of seeing or vision to a specific area that you can specify or to a specific distance sorry that you can specify later on you can find that useful as the example say when you want to sh you show the, the the footing or when you have a two levels and you want to show what above the stair and below the stairs for example and let me show you that and explain it for you and i think by doing that i'm gonna explain uh i'm gonna jump actually to here number seven which is uh, a furniture and the view depth and let let have a look so if if you have this bed and you copy it right here you know and if you remember that we have a street here and ramp and 
you know the whole thing here that's more that's my bed and because that the the button of the view range is locked to this level you are not going to see the ramp nor the street or nor the curb if you remember that and and if you again if you don't remember just don't select anything and again go to the <clears throat> sorry view range and you're going to see that the bottom thing the the minimum thing to be seen is to be set as a zero from the current level which is a ground floor logic so that's why you see the bed that's why you see this edge but nothing beneath now if i select this guy and you remember this bed it's it's again it's a level base family so it's attached to this level so i can actually change its level and place it to the street which is a lower level by 1.5 to 1.6 millimeter meters change that hit apply and it's gonna be disappear from here and if you go to the 3d and it's supposed to be you know it's in the street so it is it is there and it has been created but you cannot see it and if you go to the ground floor again you start crying because you don't see it and I see lots of people keep replacing elements because of this and they are adding uh, lots of furniture in the street lots of things in the lower level that's happened also when you have a two levels that have a stairs or a landscape design <clears throat> you have to understand that to solve to solve this issue you have to make one click or two clicks in here you go to view range and you know you need you remember this depth thing this guy here just push that to the level below or make it unlimited in our case unlimited or level below whatever hit apply and okay you're gonna see the bed and because rivet actually expansion the the lowest point that it's actually allowed to be shown and this is specific view to the street and in this case you can see the bed placed there this is an important thing because it might you know it might take lots of time for you from you to remember that you need to control and understand the view range always when you place a piece of furniture remember is it meant to be in the ground floor as a floor plan or it's meant to be in the ceiling system okay always remember if you didn't see it it could be in a specific point that it couldn't be shown in this view range so you have to change the view range and control it this might be really loud and clear when you put the I, I, as you can see all my documents so far is just the sketches it doesn't have a specific functions and that's a very basic as well as as I said but if you have you have you know if you design a room and that room have a bathroom window you will notice and suffer actually enough by not being able to see that window of the bath in this specific view because it's more than let's say let's say it's 1.5 or 1.4 uh the sill or the lower point of it is starting from the floor finish and that's by that you can see it and anyway you can solve that by having your own your own uh, your own uh, plan a view plan actually for it but always remember the point is always to remember that if this object is actually above or outside the view range limits that allow for this type of plan or this type of view actually <clears throat> sorry so again that's been said which is point seven also we can jump into aligning furniture aligning furniture is at a very basic it, it's actually basically explaining a line command and then i'm going to jump to group that uh, furniture and uh, it's it's really it's really nice topic to talk about so if, if you want to place any type of you know chairs maybe let's let's load that so seating let's have this I think it's legal Bose chair nice and lovely so you place this guy here okay and then probably you hit space and then you place it here anyway now if I want to go again and place a table I'm gonna load it and let's go a table maybe this one all right see that's how you align it automatically and just be a little bit patient because because it's it's allow you to do the whole align thing 
without using the align command if that blue dashed line shown that means it's actually aligning itself with the object how about above the object you want to align to just put the mouse above you see this cross now when you go to the left it's align it's allowing you to align center to center with that if you go right if you go beneath you see this and it should it should be you know sense two object at the same time but i don't know why it's 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 not doing that anyway so by placing this let's say here you know now if, if if you gave up on the whole process you can just select the object or just go to modify use the align command have the center of that as a reference or a target and then click the center of the table and by that it's aligned to both objects as you can see and that's really cool now you might need to use uh, a mirror and pick that guy and mirror this guy and then again use mirror again use this guy and then use the uh, finish selection and then center that and you're gonna make you know this table or uh, a live a very basic living area uh, set of furniture that you dealt with the align the align command by using it so it's it's really important to understand how to place elements correctly without you know being in the pain of using the align command by using space maybe you can you know align that or rotate that and make things based on uh, a logic relationship to each other and again you can lock that relationship and by using the align command and uh, define this a, a distance between it exactly and all other objects anyway so if you select those again so you are able actually either to create a selection uh, as a, to save the selection here actually or you can go ahead and create a group which is here so it's really it depend on what are actually you doing so if you are uh, uh, intention to reselect those objects and they are not just a five maybe that's really too much object that you spend serious amount of time trying to remember that selection in this case go to save selection from here and give it a name I don't know what is it furniture and hit OK and nothing gonna happen except that those are all saved somewhere as a selection set so if you go to modify uh, actually manage yeah here yeah, manage and you can find here load selection it's allow you actually it's gonna show you whatever you name it just click it and go ahead and it's gonna save it they are not a group they are not a block call it whatever you want to call it they are just a set of uh, selection that's been given for you and you can again change that sorry you can again change that and change anything you like from uh, hang on let me put my mobile on silence so you can go ahead and uh, edit the selection and you can you know manipulate uh, uh, the, the prop the parameter actually of it or filter some object out of it anyway so that's been said that's a selection and probably you're going to use it whenever you need to recall a group of elements uh, again either to show it to a client but you are not actually intend intended to repeat it or use it as a block uh, or as a group sorry <clears throat> block more like a term uh, you used in AutoCAD before but now if we group those guys and you go to here and create a group sorry you select that guy in order to create a group create a group and let's call it group one and hit OK now when you select them all you're gonna select them as one object and that could be really useful when you deal with a type of furniture that will be repeated in like a hundred rooms especially when you design a typical hotel room and you want the furniture in all rooms to be the same and place in the same thing it would be very wise if you group them and it's again very similar to the concept of blocks and blocks in AutoCAD because when you copy that you know it should when you select that guy edit that group change something and if you notice when I hit edit the background has been changed 
to this, you know, I don't know what, what you call it, a beige color or a different color, just to allow you that you are in the edit group mode. So change the, the location of one of, or, or any of these furnitures within the group when you want to finish the edit group mode, you will notice that the rest will respond similarly. That's very powerful thing when you, when the client change something in a piece of furniture in one room and tell you to update that exactly in all the rooms. It will be a very painful process if you just copy paste them. You should make them as a group so you can allow, you are actually allowed to, you know, you know, unify them by the same relationship and you can change them all with one click as I did right now. So that might be a little bit of a difference or something to talk about managing a group again is the difference between saving or creating a selection set from creating uh, groups uh, of a furniture. And now you can select them and maybe the last thing to be said is to have what this is called selection books and it's basically isolate or separate those things you selected into uh, something like a section box so you're gonna just get rid of everything in the view and keep those things in the in in the in the selection box uh, it might be useful when the, the the whole project will be really crowdy it's gonna cut everything and keep those for you and if i go back to here let me put that maybe in the building somewhere like this and I'm gonna remove that I don't know you probably don't like the place where I am not really you know about architectural correct placement rather than to show you again this guy see it also gonna remove uh, the building but keep other architectural elements the ground might be even useful for making a nice uh, presentation for the living room or a kitchen by making a selection for it and then you hit that a button to create that uh, selection box uh, so it could be a, a way to isolate a group of elements in order to process everything in it and get rid of a complicated geometry or it would be a good way to showing uh, just a way of a presentation for your client to show him that uh, part of the building or uh, that part of selection or part of furniture again so that's been said Back to our list, so we talk about aligning furniture, grouping furniture, furniture and save selection, load selection, and the furniture and the view depth, selection box also been set. Now, uh, picking a new host uh, for the furniture, and then I'm gonna back to the cutting furniture. Picking host for a furniture is actually very similar to what we've done when we placed a bed. So if you remember when I just to place uh, a chair or a bed in this area and again we said it's been placed related to the level one it's, it's very similar when you select down and you place it on the street gonna be lowered if I look at that element I'll just push it very close to the section so I can see it in the section actually if I look at it here see that's uh, that's well, that's my chair, little buzi chair actually, and it's sitting on this ground floor thing. Uh, you can just uh, select that guy, and you go uh, pick a host here. It's it's very similar to changing this, you know, when you change the level. So I can just pick a host and select here. It's gonna you know jumped above to this level and so on. So I'm I'm changing actually the host or the reference plane that actually you know contain that object again it's similar to changing that in here and instead of you know you know using move command because I know some people love to use move you know vertically and you know you get much frustrated lots of people hate Revit because it's not like max you can select the object and push it up and down yes it's not reduced to be max try to you know understand how this uh, software works it, it, it shouldn't be flying no chair should be flying in the air, you know, it should touching the ground. And that's really an important topic. You can offset that later on, but not in the way that it's been left to, you know, a, a factor of mistake or need, the need to be accurate a couple of times to move it a little bit up and down. And then it messed up the whole thing for you when you render because the chair is actually flying in the air and not touching the floor. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's about it. We still have one point, which is cutting furniture themselves. 
and or cutting family members and cutting family member can be really an annoying issue and as you can see this guy uh, it isn't been cut and let's try to oh it's above so back to the section and let me just set that guy back to the ground floor so if I go back to section I can see it sorry a ground floor I can see it now I see it good so if I push that to be exactly on the cut line and you go to the to the section itself see it's it's not been cut and probably that really makes sense see the wall it's a cutable or an object architecture element that can be cut and it show you something different from the elevation of that wall see this guy see this it's 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 not it's not been able to be cut and it's going to show you an elevation part of, of an object while this type of furniture sorry this type of family and it's it's a, it's a window as you can see it show you something else it's actually can be cut in the section and again architecturally it it makes sense because you should see the section of the window you're not supposed to see an elevation but no one care to see two pipes only from that chair when you cut it because no one to see section really section in this piece of elevation unless some type some some i think it could be useful when you uh, uh to uh, to allow you to cut the furniture maybe when you do some uh, you know you know, uh, furniture uh, like so not furniture. It's actually fitting like a kitchen, uh, a kitchen bench. Maybe you want to see a detail or section in it, but that's a totally different thing from cutting a, a chair or a table. And again, if you select that guy and you go to Edit Family, so you know why that's been happen or happening. It's it's actually you can select any object and you go to the visibility setting. You will notice that most of the option are actually exist except this been grayed out so when cut and plan and section if category permits that thing is really important because the type that this object is being created as a piece of furniture it doesn't allow anything to be cut and when you cut it actually with the section it will still show you the entire elevation of an object but if you have another type of family like the window again and you go to edit family for it and open Revit family editor for you you go to the visibility setting you're gonna see that object really really alive here and you can control whether it's been cut you are able to cut it or you are not able to cut it and it makes sense that this object is you know window you might need actually you will need to see it as uh, an object that's been cut so consider that to choose when you create a family and when you go here for right a new and family and create a new family consider what type of family you are loading you know and you're gonna you know that by experience the category are uh, some of them able to be cut and some of them are not and that's a kind of an important thing to uh, you when you deal with more like an advanced architectural modeling anyway uh, that's about it guys and i wish that you find this uh, video tutorial uh, sorry I, I wish that you find this uh, video useful uh, all the best for you thank you and have a good one bye bye